What do I say? <laughs> What's going on my friends? Welcome to another video here. My name is Bijan if anybody is new here and I know it's a little bit of a different kind of angle here. I just figured might as well try something new because just because so uh, we're gonna do a trade recap. I made like two thousand three hundred dollars over the course of a couple days. I'm gonna break it down for you. We're gonna show you guys the trade plan, the orders, the mortars, and just anything else you can think of. We're gonna show it and we're jumping right into it here. Let's jump into it here. We're going to be going over this CRM that we were trading here again. Now, I wasn't planning on making a video on this or really making a video at all this week. The reason why I'm doing it is because this is actually a follow up on a trade that I did on the same stock from last week where we it's my losing trade video. If you go to my previous video, uh, the one where I lost money, it was on CRM. Technically, we didn't even lose. We made it. But either way, you guys can go watch that video. You can get the perspective from it. But because I revisited that same trade, that's why I wanted to make this video. Um, again, I wasn't planning on making any videos this week. It's been kind of a hectic week for me just because, you know, I had some like medical procedures going on earlier this week. Then I had to go out of town for my dog to have some medical procedures and like scans and all that we had to go out of town for. And then it's like, I, this is the first time in my life having a house. So with that being said, and everybody in my family owning like condominiums and things like that and apartments and all that in small places, I'm the one hosting the holidays this year. So Obviously safety don't yell at me for anything that's going on, but you guys get what I'm saying So it's a lot on me right now lots to handle I wasn't planning on making a video But I said let me do this for you guys kind of just jump in show you guys what's going on and follow up on that other trade So looking at it right here It's gonna show that we only made four hundred and seventy five dollars today Because it was a trade that was over the course of a few days So I took it back three days here to pull up the orders for you guys so you guys can see what was going on now, I'm not going to spend too much time breaking down the prices and all that like I normally would do, uh, just because I do that in all the other videos and I feel like it irritates some people. I know it benefits some other people that are new, but those new people, hey, go watch those other videos. It'll clear it up for you. So you're going to take a look at right here. Um, I'm just going to go over the orders. Then we'll jump to the chart and talk about everything I was seeing, why I got in, why this, why that, and all that. So I had 500 shares on the 15th. Today's the 17th, so the 15th was Tuesday. Um, and again, this trade, I'd say wouldn't even, it didn't take more than two hours of my time total from searching and scanning to find the trade to the actual implementing it and all that. Um, and, and I planned my week like this because I knew I was going to have a busy week. I knew I wasn't going to want to be in front of the computers all day, every morning and all that. So uh, again, just kind of showing you guys that you can do whatever really you want with trading. You can kind of make it, you know, accustomed to your lifestyle, make it accommodate to your lifestyle. Um, even if your lifestyle changes, you know, some weeks I'm doing nothing, some weeks I'm doing everything. And you guys can clearly see through my trading history how that reflects that and the ability to just do whatever you want. So I had 500 shares at 219.80, we'll call it. So basically, I was watching this for a dip to the 220 area, and that's pretty much where I got it the 219.80, I mean, like 20 cents below the 220. Um, I had 500 shares. Now, I sold 300 of the shares the next day. At 223.65. Now, there's a few reasons that I sold this. One has to do with like some political things we'll talk about when I get to the charts, um, but also because it was pretty close to my profit target, as well as the fact that it started showing some signs of rejection. So I closed out some of the trade there, and then I held the other 200, the final 200 shares, and I sold those at 226. So real briefly here, we're gonna just go over the profit. 219.80. To 223.65, that's a profit of three dollars and eighty-five cents there. So I sold three hundred shares for a profit of three dollars and eighty-five cents. That's basically me locking in one thousand one hundred and fifty-five dollars profit. Then the additional two hundred I was holding it until two twenty-six. So two nineteen eighty until two twenty-six is basically six dollars and twenty cents of profit. So I made $6.20 profit on the additional 200 shares that I was holding. So $6.20 times 200 is 1,240 that I locked in on my final closing order there. So in total, the total profit was 1,155 plus 1,240, giving us a total profit of 2,395. Now I know it took a little bit more time to explain that here because of the fact that I couldn't just say, hey, look guys, here's the profit because it was all broken up with the profit loss day and all of that because it was over a course of a few days and because I sold some here, sold some there. Um, but that's basically it. The overall total profit of this was 2,395. We'll just say 2,300 for the sake of it. I did it on, I got into it Tuesday morning, closed it out 
Thursday morning. Well, okay, got into it Tuesday morning, closed half of it Wednesday afternoon, and then the rest of it I closed Thursday morning, locking in the total profit there. And again, like I said, this was basically because I wanted to uh, recap. Let me just go 10 days back for you guys. Ignore every. Let me just make it easier for you guys. How's that? Uh, there we go. This is all the CRM. This was the trade that I did last week where I said I lost money, but I technically made it. You know, we got 500 shares at 221.61, sold it at 221.82. I mean, it was kind of like a break even, really. Um, and I even in that video said, I'm going to revisit this trade next week if it comes back to 220. So here we are next week at 220. I revisited the trade and it worked. So that's what I main reason why I wanted to make this video. Now let's just jump into it here and... Um, Go ahead and show you guys everything here. Man, this DKNG was also one that was on the watch list and that I was trading on Monday. Um, you know, I'm getting sidetracked here, but we had a nice $1,000 profit on it. I got it at 50 and sold it at 51 for 1,000 shares. I didn't hold it overnight because that was the day of like the whole final announcement of the presidential election and everything. And I said, I don't want to be holding overnight for that. Um, and that was here. And lo and behold, now he went to the 55 area, which is what my plan was. But anyways, that's besides the fact. So this was the main trade for the week. I guess you can say it was the CRM. It was kind of pointless mentioning that DKNG. But hey, anyways, there it was. Um, this is where I got into it Tuesday. So keep in mind, I had been watching it for a dip to the 220 area. We didn't get that dip on Monday, so I didn't do anything with it. We got the dip to not today. I'm sorry. On Tuesday, we got the dip. Let me put it on a one minute chart here for three days, five days is fine. That'll just make it easier. So this is where I got into it. Right here is it kind of, it came, dropped down to that 220, kind of popped back above it and kind of started lingering, lingering, lingering. And this is where I got into it right here at the 717 area. Uh, let me, sorry guys. We're just going to put this back on the small one. You guys don't need to see ones from last week anyways. If there's any haters out there that want to try and catch me for my trades, you guys can go pause the video and do what you need to do there. Um, <laughs> but so 717 is basically where I got into the trade right here, right around the 220. I know I was like 20 cents below it, but it was 220 guys. Basically I was in it at 220, uh, 219.80. And now my plan was if it went below the 217.50 area, I would have gotten out for a loss. And then my profit target was 225. And now what is going to hold some until to see if we could get 227.50, um, now, obviously, I kind of deviated from the plan a little bit, and I'm going to explain why. So this was my entry point. We got in it. It closed above the 220 area. Um, so everything was good. I held it overnight. Everything was still good. I had no reason to get out of it really yet, except for the fact that now this Wednesday was a Fed day, basically, where they talk about the interest rates and all of that. I don't like holding trades through that announcement. It happens at right 11 a.m. my time. You can see on anything. I mean, even if we go pull up, like, you know, a... a oil stock or I'm sorry, a, a bank stock, you'll probably see a lot of, you know, something popped off right weird right at 11. Now, usually it's not this calm, uh, but I guess because the world has had so much other stuff going on in it, they really didn't care about that, the Fed meeting this time. But either way, my general preca precautions as a trader told me, hey, dude, you don't like holding full position sizes through a Fed meeting. So with that being said, I was trying to hold it, hold it, hold it all the way into the Fed meeting and sell it like right before 11. But I had also noticed it was rejecting this 224 once, twice, three times, came back up to it, started rejecting it again. So I said, all right, I honestly didn't think that we were going to get above 224 prior to the meeting, which was at 11. So I said, all right, just close out half of it. I closed out 300 of it right here, um, right at that 223.65 area, basically the 224 area. So I'm trying to explain to you guys why I closed out at 224 instead of waiting for the 225 is because one, I saw some signs of rejection and two, we had the Fed meeting that I didn't want to hold it till. But at the same time, I still had my plan and I wanted to stick to my plan. So I just kind of protected myself by sizing down. Then I held the rest and I held that overnight. Uh, we gapped up, we opened at 225. Um, and I, I, you know, I had no reason to sell it yet. You know, at this point I had raised my stop and said, okay, if we go below the 224 area, I'll get out of it. So I'm trying to show you guys how you can also actively trade these things as well. You know, you place the trade, you can monitor it and adjust it if you want. You know, I could still be holding it right now um, if I just raised my stop to the 224 area because it hasn't pinged below that 224 area yet. However, I know that I was going to be out of the trade at the 227.50 at the I wouldn't say worst case, I guess the best case scenario. And we were literally pinging almost the 226.50. So I'm like, all right, I'm a dollar short. The options trader within me of wanting to close things out into strength, selling into strength, as I mentioned in some of my other videos and as I mentioned in my course, 
uh, just one and say, all right, dude, get out of it. What are you going to get greedy? You're only in at 200 more shares. If it goes up to 227.50, you're only going to make an extra $200. Get out of it. Be done with it. Move on with your day. Move on with your life. Uh, and that's pretty much that. So that's where I closed out the trade is because we were already above my primary profit target. We we're pretty close to my secondary profit target and we we're already shooting up out of the open. I like to close out into strength. So that's pretty much what happened there, guys. That was really the trade at hand that we were working with. It was the CRM. Basically, I got into it on a dip to the 220 area as I had been watching it for because that's what was basically like a, a support area, if you will, on the longer term time frame. And this was something that was on the swing trading side of the watch list, which means that it was perfectly fine to hold it overnight. Um, and that's really that, guys. I don't want to get too detailed into this and start rambling and nagging too much about it. It was a $2,300 overall profit, even though it only shows like $500 on the profit day. Um, but the, here's the orders for you guys. 220 we were in it. Sold majority of it. 223 65 rest at 226 um and that's pretty much that so i'll wrap it up here guys i would just greatly appreciate if you guys could press that thumbs up button apparently it helps the algorithm or the the calculations or whatever is going on the engagement um, i'll put some links in the description in case anybody is interested in learning how to do this stuff or joining my watch list you guys just want to see what i'm trading um, and that's pretty much that guys i know i said that that's pretty much it like 10 times but we'll wrap it up here i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys have a great rest of your day a great rest of your night just have a great rest of your life and i will talk to you all soon